very warm welcome. This is Bertram on Radio 1. My name is Bertram. Bertram, nice making a sense of children in Uganda. Of child labor, why is it dangerous for children to engage in gainful employment? Reports continue to emerge about how children in Uganda are being exploited by unscrupulous people, including their parents, who prefer for them to stay out of school in exchange for gainful employment. In Uganda, many children are forced to become domestic workers, or house girls, house girls or house boys, as they are sometimes called, on top of working in quarries and other industries. According to national laws, no child may be involved in gainful employment. The Education Act uh, itself stresses that children must be in school. Many parents have, however, remained adamant, saying they often depend on their children for an income and that they have the children's interests at heart anyway. It's also true that some children are forced to stay out of school due to other factors, but poverty uh, seems to be the most common. Last year, it was reported by the Uganda Bureau of Statistics that up to 1.8 million children in Uganda are engaged in gainful employment. A report released today following a study conducted in two tobacco growing districts of Masindi and Chiriandongo in the West indicate that children from the, ages, the age of 5 to 17 are being forced out of school to work on tobacco farms despite the dangers associated with the crop. So tonight we focus on the fate of children in Uganda, trying to establish how the country is likely to be affected by the persistent use of children as laborers. We will also analyze the findings of the latest report on child labor in the tobacco uh, growing districts of Masindi and uh, Chiriantonga as mentioned earlier to try and understand what exactly is happening and the dangers these children are likely to face. Our guest tonight, Mr. Haruna Mawa, a child rights activist. You're most welcome, Haruna. Thank you so much. Also joined by Ms. Sharon Mohezi, program associate in charge of social protection at the platform for labor action. You're most welcome, Sharon. Thank you. Good evening, listeners. Uh, we're also joined by Mr. Isaac Arin Naito, the net networking and community development officer at the platform for labor action. You're most welcome, Isaac. Thank you so much. Good evening, listeners. Isaac, the involvement in the work, gainful employment for children, has been uh, classified as an abuse. But many parents say, well, they know what is good for their children, and this is mostly in the rural areas, and they need, uh, you know, the children to help work so they can bring bread to the table. How bad is the situation? Give us some figures. Is it a terrible thing, and how does it contravene the law? Yeah, I must say it's a terrible thing uh, because uh, the statistics we have for Uganda show that uh, 1.76 million children. Um, aged between seven to I mean five to seventeen years old are engaged in child labor, and um, these children are found working in different. From the majority are found working in agriculture. We have others working in mining, uh, domestic work, and um, uh, transport sector, uh, fishing and construction among others. So. Of course, agriculture takes the, the biggest percentage of uh, children in, engaged in child labor. And of course, uh, there are many factors that have affected these children due to the fact that they are not either engaged in work, they are engaged in labor, uh, yet they are supposed to be maybe in school. So basically, that's why you see uh, the problem of child labor. Of course, the problem of child labor is uh, very serious in Uganda and really needs serious intervention uh, against. So when does child labor become child labor? Uh, what I can, uh, actually, this, this all originates from the definition. Uh, our national child labor policy defines child labor as work that mentally, physically, socially, and all morally uh, is dangerous and harmful to the children. And in addition, uh, Child labor is perceived as work or activities that interfere with the children's school attendance. So when we have work that makes, uh, that affects the mental status of children, I, I can give an example. For example, child labor in tobacco growing. Uh, children engaged in uh, this kind of activity uh, end up, you know, especially during harvesting, they end up getting some leaves, you know. They sample their yeah, harvest. Yeah, just sample their just harvest. Just like if you're growing maize, you roast a little bit of yeah, it. Yeah, try, <laughs> try to see what the adults are doing in the sector, so they end up they end up smoking at that young, uh, their young age. And of course, when we talk about the health of the, ch of the, ch of the children, uh, an, an example of child, uh, I mean of uh, uh, tobacco growing, uh, the skin of the children 
is really not as strong as the one of an adult. So uh, they are, they are, the, the contact of the skin with, uh, the with, the, with the tobacco leaves, you know, is they affects their health. They get lacerations. Yeah, and uh, they get rashes. They get right. problems. They get respiratory problems through. Uh, smoking the the, the, the the crop, you know there is also what we call curing tobacco. This is uh, a form of drying. Uh, you can stitch it on, uh, on on you can stitch it, then hang it around the rooms, or you can uh, put it in a dark room, then put smoke smoke it up so that it will so when kids are exposed to that kind of smoke of course the smoke is not good even the smell of tobacco when it is packed in a big room you know the smell is not good uh, for the health of the kid so at the end of it the kids are, are, are affected their health is affected and of course the nature of uh, a, a crop like tobacco is actually all year round uh, beginning gen uh, beginning maybe March that is planting season, March, uh, maybe we can say January. You have to clear the land, you have to set the seed, the, the seed bed, you know, follow it up until then you have to change and transplant, you have to uh, clear the land, then put the, those seedlings there. That is very hectic. So kids, are, children are usually used in those activities. And then in June, now the crop has, um, it needs weeding, actually before June it needs weeding. And the nature of tobacco is if you fail to weed in time, you will get less uh, yields at the end, so you won't get good money. If you if you plant late, you will get little yields again. So because of that, and then you also have to plant on a large scale so that you can get profits at the end. So because it's very and then harvesting also, uh, if you re fail to harvest, it's labor intensive. Yeah, it's really labor intensive. That's what I'm trying to explain. Right. Actually. So because of that, you know some. Some people end up, some families end up using children because you know children you can easily pay them little money or you can just uh, deceive them and buy them sweets. Yeah, buy them sweets and they can do work for you. So at the end of it, by the time you raise kids are supposed to go to school, it's November. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's September. From January, they've now, been busy. Now the kid is wondering, why should I go to school to study? Almost, I won't do anything in the exams. So at the end of it, we are having a lot, I mean, a good number of children not attending school, children missing school. We are having um, children performing poor at the end, those who attempt to do exams. So at the end of it, you see it's affecting the, 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 the education of the child. And right. our national Child Labour Policy uh, and other international laws actually that Uganda has ratified yes. clearly <laughs> indicate that any work that hinders the education of a child is child it's labor. Child labor. Yeah. Haruna brought it a, a little bit for us beyond tobacco. What else uh, do children get involved in a great deal here? Uh, well, thank you so much. Uh, now, uh, the agriculture and tobacco in particular that uh, my colleague has been talking about uh, based on the study uh, that was uh, given to us today uh, contributes to other forms that widely undermine the rights of children. Uh, if you look at other forms of child labor or activities where children are highly uh, engaged in, in the aspect, you look at uh, activities like fishing. Now, if you look at fishing, you're going to look at the fishing communities uh, around Lake Victoria. You're talking about Mukono, you are talking about Kampala, uh, you are talking about uh, Jinja, you are talking about areas like uh, around the belt, River Nile belt, you go to areas around Lake Albert, Lake Yoga. Now, these are areas where you have a very huge number of children involved in fishing. Now, as we all know that fishing is done normally in canoes and when the fishing is carried out, most of the fishermen, I, I don't know if these are called f fisher children, <laughs> but these are children uh, who carry out fishing without any gear on them. And we have had the accidents that have happened 
in the past, especially on Lake Albert, where a high number of children have had to die, especially during they, fishing. They drowned during yes, fishing. drowning. And Is that because of storms or what? It's a shallow lake, Lake Albert. And yeah, Lake Albert, but also Victoria. We have had those cases sometimes because of waves, but also other normal accidents uh, that these boats, canoes, are vulnerable to. Actually, Albert is not a, I beg your pardon, Albert is not a shallow lake. It's Lake Choker that's shallow. Albert is deep because it's in the river Valley gone. So, uh, if you look at the accidents that normally occur with these canoes, uh, they normally occur when some of uh, the children are involved, especially when it comes to fishing. If you go to areas uh, around Kalangala, where much uh, of the fishing takes place, and ginger for that case, and around Pakwachi, if you go to the banks of River Nile, where yeah. children are involved in fishing. So it is causing also accidents to children. A number have died. Unfortunately, as a country, we still have uh, a gap when it comes to statistics. We are not able to uh, confidently speak out on how many children, for instance, have died in the, past, in the last 10 years because of accidents that have occurred as a result of uh, fishing, which is uh, the one form where children are involved. But you also have... Uh, Cases of uh, domestic work where children are involved in doing domestic work and uh, a, a recent study doing domestic was, work for yes, a fee domestic work for a fee but we my colleague earlier defined it uh, that child labor is any work that denies a child the right to go to school mm -hmm. and hinder their and uh, is harmful to their health. Now we are talking about children below the age of 12 left in homes to carry out cooking, washing clothes, uh, ironing and doing several other roles within the home setting. Now that does not only affect or deny them a chance to go to school, but also affects their health. We are looking at a 12-year-old child who is left at home. Uh, in 2011, there was a case I followed closely in which uh, a 12-year-old child in Kasangati, I'm not going to speak about the person in whose home this child was got, but the lady had six children. None, all of them were above 15 and in school. But she had this 12-year-old housemaid who was doing all the donkey work for the 15-year-old and above, who used to go to school and the child was basically laboring for these children. And now, under those circumstances, those are some of the areas where children are involved, but you also have uh, sex exploitation, where you have children who are employed in bars during broad daylight. Uh, children are serving beer, but at night, they are turned into prostitutes and that is very common in uh, tourist sites around ginger it is very rampant if you look at the number of children who are involved in those activities uh, and some of the tourists who are sexually exploiting children we have recently had the case of uh, Emily Barrow uh, uh, the man who is behind bars now for uh, uh, sexually abusing children. Now, all that is occurring as a result of uh, the boom, the tourism boom that is happening around Ginger, but also the children who are coming to work. The owners of the bars pretend to be employing those children as... Uh, how can how do they call them? And Waitre waitresses. Uh, waitresses. If you go to Kalangala, where there are so many beaches, Kalangala, areas around Ginger and around these national parks where these children are bought. In the day, during daylight, they are used as waitresses. But beyond 10 p.m., they become commercial sex workers. And very many have fallen victims. Of course, we are talking about contracting HIV, AIDS, which is, uh, and also getting pregnant, unwanted pregnancies. You know Uganda has the second highest uh, early marriage rates in Eastern Central Africa, but one of the causes is because of uh, these issues that are coming out as a result of uh, children who are involved in child labor, for reasons that some are not responsible for, because if you look at the causes which he outlined, causes of uh, poverty, in most cases it's not the children who are responsible for the poverty in which they are involved. We know very well that majority of the children who are involved in child labor are not children from Bugolobi. These are not children from Tinder, but the children who are involved in child labor are children whose parents are struggling economically. We are talking ab uh, 
at a rate where 31 percent of the population lives below the poverty line meaning that on a daily basis a parent with about five children is not able to get 2400 shillings now what does that imply on the side of children that many of the children have to go an extra mile and engage in uh, activities that can help them support their homes to right. provide food, to right. provide school fees, okay. to provide clothes, and look after their other siblings within homes. But the consequences that come with that are grave. I've already mentioned that uh, because of the exploitation, especially sexual, we have had cases of uh, early marriages, very rampant in Uganda. We have had, uh, we've had cases of defilement uh, in the recently released police crime report about s over 7,000 children were defiled yes. in Uganda this year. Right. Now, if you critically look at those who are defiled, it's you're going young. to establish that the number who are defiled as a result of them trying to earn a living yeah. is significant. All right. Well, listeners, this is Spectrum on Radio and tonight, making a case for children in Uganda. How bad is the situation? Looking at statistics of child labor. Why is it dangerous for children to engage in gainful employment? Our guests tonight, Mr. Haruna Mawa, they, uh, is a child rights activist. Ms. Sharon Muhuezi, program associate in charge of social protection at the platform for labor action and Mr. Isaac Arinaite, networking and code, uh, community development officer at the same organization. You will be able to contribute to this discussion at some stage. Sharon, when many children are not in school because their parents cannot avoid it, why would they not work? So you're considering the household poverty? Well, being their parents can't bring the bread home, so the children can't go out and get a living, earn a living. Uh, if you notice, we we make we do have a difference between light work and then um, sometimes what is called regular work that is allowed for children of certain ages. Um, for example, 16 and above, and according to some laws, 14 and above. And then we do have work that is dangerous, that which defeats the purpose of working to make one's life better. Um, it's specifically the poverty argument, though it stands very, very much and is very significant, is very hard to justify in Uganda under the era of UPE. Usually, when it comes oh, to but UPE gives them education, doesn't give them books, doesn't give them. Oh yeah, and yeah, it doesn't give them food either. Um, but. We, we try, uh, for example, this study recommends alternative ways of, um, so if you look at kids that work, for example, our study found that children in tobacco growing households are most likely to be involved in, um, in child labor that deters them from going to school, as opposed to households that have some other source of income. And that is tied back to the economy of tobacco and delayed payments. And, um, oh, tobacco people don't pay on time. Um, yeah, yeah the, the companies delay. If you go to Masindi and Kiliandongo today and ask tobacco farmers, who, when they are starting to grow tobacco, thought it's a cash crop, who thought we shall grow tobacco, get money, then buy food at home, instead of growing food crops, they regret very much because there are years when the tobacco companies haven't shown up. Well, but so, they still grow tobacco. They could have gone to Matoke or something else. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we're looking at moving away from that. We're looking at um, what is causing that poverty, and we're looking at um, other ways of mitigating that their need for food and clothing. Um, that is an alternative from... Because tobacco, working on tobacco farms is not only... The lack of payment sometimes is not the immediate problem. The, the immediate problem is um, the health hazards. The health hazards, the fact that um, we are prolonging poverty, so your parents are poor, you're not going what to school. Prolonging poverty. Going from generation to generation, yeah. if after 20 years, if I've been working since I was five. The cycle of poverty. Yeah, I'm not going to go to P1 when I'm 25 if I work for 20 years. Right. So we're, how do we break that cycle? Definitely not by working and toiling as our parents worked and toiled. My fellow so, soldier tell. Buffalo Soldier. There used to be that song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we're looking at breaking that cycle. We're looking at other. We're trying to not justify diseases, cuts, wounds, and burns, and lack of education on farms in view of a bigger, brighter future for this generation. Yeah. So the children were taken from a tobacco farm to a sugarcane plantation. Would that make life better? No. 
um, especially if you look at it from the perspective of hours spent out of school and yes. how much demand there is on the farm. And keep in mind, when you talk about children uh, working to earn these things, scholastic materials and other basic utilities, like clothes, remember they're exploited, they're not paid, um, sayings, teaching, a stick of tobacco. I was looking at the report, it says we had another 20,000, they give them 5,000. Yeah, or and sometimes the a plate of food. Problem. Yeah, yeah, because they, they are not old enough to bargain. And some are forced. Um, some tobacco companies will come and hire a household, not a person, and that household will have to produce a certain quota, and the father will drag along all his wives and children. There is no choice in that, and there is no, and because the father signed the contract, the father gets the money, we don't see the money going directly to the child. In that sense, they are being exploited, and so it's not directly benefit, you can't tell him he's getting a new shirt. He didn't see the shirt. He didn't <coughs> have the money. Right. Well, yeah. at least the dad drinks and comes up <laughs> singing about God's whether Unfortunately. they exist or they don't exist. Isaac, yeah. what work is acceptable for a child who's not working, who's not going to school? Uh, thank you very much. Um, as we had in, as I in, as indicated in my, in my uh, definition of child labor, uh, we have laws in Uganda and uh, in, uh, in, and also at the uh, international level that Uganda has ratified. Uh, children can do work what Alfred Sharon had uh, identified as light work. This is work that does not deter children from uh, from going to school. This is work that does not affect the, 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 the physical, mental development of a child. And this is work which is done under the supervision of an adult person. So I can give an example because actually it's good you have asked this question because most most communities confuse it with the you know teaching their children how to learn to work. Well, they say that. Yeah. So when you talk about the issue of child labor, immediately they say, "So are you saying we shouldn't teach our children to work?" No, that's not what we are saying. That's not child labor. Yeah, we are saying if I have children, if I have a child, uh, can I make, uh, for example, I have a child who uh, I have taken for a print, a print, a print yes. yes, and uh, this child can be able to make a sandal, okay, uh, can be able to make a shoe. Uh, can this child, of course, because now that one is going to hit anybody, this child to get money. Maybe this child is already 15 years and uh, formerly has not been going to school and if he's right now at 15 years, even if given an opportunity, he doesn't feel comfortable being in P1. So if I can take a child for that kind of opportunity, uh, may, may be a vocational school and has gotten skills, this kid can be able to do that kind of work because this kind of work does not affect this child. We are talking about uh, children uh, learning how to, to wash dishes. We are not saying that now they have become domestic workers, no. Uh, but I have a child, she has come from school. Oh, you said children are not school. Well, let's talk about that as uh, well. Yeah, children of but, campus, but, but, but I think it's uh, to, to put the record straight. Mm. Uh, a child who is not in school yes. and a child who is in school, yes. uh, as long as uh, you are at the rightful age, age, for instance, that can carry out cleaning of a home yes. under the supervision of a Over. parent yes. outside class hours and that's not, not interfering mm -hmm. with your health, it's not a problem. I think that's where our yes. society... So you're saying the children can, can wash dishes yes. when they get home? I, I can say at, at home you can help with... At the staff, right age. At the right age and with the help. I mean, with the under supervision. supervision, yeah, because if you are not under supervision, you end up being cut by knives uh, and other So, yeah, it depends now what should you wash, what should you not. But again, children, uh, the, the, the children should be given the best opportunity to go to school. Because if this child is not at school, then that is and engaged in work, then that is child labor. And uh, what? Uh, engaged in labor, eh? okay? Yes. Then that is child labor because uh, we are talking about child labor being that work that deters children from not attending school. Right. Yeah, because you asked me that children who are not attending school. Yes. Uh, you know, that's a little, a little bit try to make that, some school fees that, money that, yeah, the, for the, next year. The probably. school children possibly are exempted from light work.
I don't do have situations where children go to work. They save work for a year to save money so they can go back to school. Do we yeah. have? Yeah, yeah you can do that. You, you, we, we have cases where children uh, move to work and uh, get money. But there are circumstances, like I did explain before. Uh, if you go to areas around uh, Rakai, where the HIV uh, subject hit hard and caused uh, in the area. We know very well that up to now, Uganda has close to 2.7 million orphans uh, caused as a result of HIV. Mm. Now, there are so many house uh, uh, child-headed families within that area. Now, I'm using Rakai because of Rabin what Rakai is a unique place. You yes. don't find so you, you, you go to a home. You go to a home and average uh, the elder or the eldest person is just 15 years. A 15 year old person is the one heading a home yes. with about four other children. Now, if this 15 year old child does not go out to do some literal work to right. earn a living, it is not you only to going work. to affect him or her, right. but the entire family. Now, under that circumstance, that's no special more. circumstance, a child can move out and do okay. some work. But because right. okay. our state has not put in place the the, the, the proper laws uh, not only laws but proper programs to look after those children okay. we are looking at uh okay we're going for a break we'll be back to explore that and look at the laws and the uniqueness of that place do stay tuned this is spectrum listeners on radio when junior lost his appetite his mother tried all methods to get him to eat she tried scary stories eat tommy eat or the big black elephant will come and eat all your food mm -hmm. She tried magic. Tommy, if you eat your food, I will turn this handkerchief into sweets. Look, bumble, bumble, boom, boom. Mm -hmm. Then she discovered Apetal multivitamin syrup with lysine. Mommy, I finished all the food. I am number one. Apetal multivitamin with lysine is helping mothers to turn mealtime frustration to a fun moment. Apetal has a great taste and contains lysine, which quickly improves your child's appetite and supports healthy growth. Apetal, help for life. Celebrate Africa with one rate, one Africa from Airtel. Call across all Africa at a flat rate of only 10 shillings per second. That's right, 10 shillings per second all day, all night. And stand a chance to win a fully paid trip for two to Mombasa every week. Another reason to celebrate Africa in proud association with Fly 540 Airlines and Serena Hotels. Terms and conditions apply. Airtel. Mike and I, we go back a bit. We knew John at the beginning, working for someone else. But he was different. He had vision, saw opportunities. He started working towards his goal, opened his own garage, and worked, learning the hard way. His reputation spread. Trust, consistency, quality. Soon people were coming to him from all parts. He made himself and his whole street prosper and also help friends see potential in people and helping them on. But John never shouts about all his success. He's just who he is. Special. So here's to men like John who make a difference, who enjoy Nile Special, the rich, satisfying taste from the sauce. Nile Special. You've earned it. Not for sale to persons under 18. Spectrum on Radio 1 FM 90. Welcome back on Spectrum tonight. Making a case for children in Uganda. How bad is the situation looking at statistics of child labor and why is it dangerous for children to engage in gainful employment? Our guest tonight, Mr. Haruna Mawa, uh, he's a child rights activist, Ms. Sharon Mwezi, Program Associate in Charge of Social Protection at the Platform for Labor Action, that's an NGO, and Mr. Isaac Arinaito, the Networking and Community Development Officer at the same organization, the PLA or Platform for Labor Action. You two will be able to call in and contribute to this discussion. Uh, Haruna, talk to us about the laws. What do the laws say about yeah, child Yeah, this is basically... 
at, at the moment, uh, as we speak, uh, we have a, a contradiction within the legal system itself. You have the constitution at one side, which is the supreme law of the land. You have the Employment Act, uh, and then you have the Children Act. Uh, the constitution yes. puts it clearly. Yes, go on. At 16, uh, the Employment Act puts it at 14. The Children Act says 18. Yes. So we do not have a harmony. We have different laws, as if it's three different, different countries. Law. Well, we, we appreciate the fact that uh, Article 2 of the Constitution puts it clearly that any law that contra, uh, contradicts with the provision of the Constitution becomes narrow. Null and void. Yeah, but this is the major problem we are facing right now, that you have the Employment Act, which on one hand is agitating for 14 years as the minimum age of employment. You have the constitution which clearly puts it at 16 years of age as the entry age for employment and you have the Children Act which at one side puts it at 18. Now that is the challenge and it's where focus must be engaged. Uh, I'm happy that we have our colleagues from Platform for Labour Action who are trying to push for this very closely and other civil society organizations in Uganda. We need that harmonization of the laws in the country. That All is right. one thing, uh, legal practice. Uh, but also, if we go by uh, the cultural setting, yes, why are children employed? Go on. Directly, go on. It will answer the question. Well, what's, what's the answer? That to one, us? the reason why children are employed, of course, one is to contribute some money to the, to the bread family basket. in the home. Two is to introduce children to work, to work genuine hard work, genuinely. And I know when uh, the African Charter on the Rights and Welfare of the Child was being put in place, 1991. Yes. Uh, one of the strong reasons that was built for. Uh, uh, putting uh, the provision of light work in that charter was on the basis that if you look at the United Nations Convention on the uh, the United Nations Convention on the rights of, the, rights of the child, yes. there is nothing mentioned about light work, and so it is a bone of contention sometimes that light light work. It what can is be abused. light work because yeah. it can be abused? What is the minimum standard? What is the yardstick for okay. measuring uh, light, work. light work? And so it is upon that basis that from the African setting, work was oh is looked at in a different perspective. It is very positive. I know there are other brothers who still look at work as uh, an abuse to a child. All right. That even a 15-year-old child cannot be given not any work. form of child. But they should be given a when remote come control to the at home. Cultural setting, especially in Africa here, children are introduced to work not for any negative pur purpose, but simply to introduce them to the aspect of work. But my yeah. colleague put it clearly that one, it must be supervised. If you're giving a child work to do in a home, to right. wash plates, to do some cooking to be able to watch, to watch on a Saturday, to a 16 year them. old, right. if you're mentoring her to be a good cook, you have to be there and observe, right. okay. not to ask a child to go uh, in the kitchen and cook in the absence of any uh, guardian. All right. You will come to Sharon, talk to us about some of the recommendations of this report. What does it recommend? A change of laws or what? Um, with regard to laws, um, our biggest one is that he just talked about, the harmonization of those three laws so that we remove the loopholes. Um, the loop, because when you're approaching someone, tell them to stop practicing child labor or to warn them or just for purposes of information before anyone even thinks of it. Um, there is 12 for light work, there is 14 for employment, and then there is 16 for 16 in, an, in the Constitution and there is 18 in the Children Act, which does not compromise at all. It says 18 is 18. There is no way around it. Um, that confuses citizens, that confuses law enforcers. It makes it hard to, which one, are, which one do you enforce, which one do we follow? They are all active in the same country. We are calling for harmonization. Of either they, they come to agreement um, first on the definitions of what's hazardous work and all, all three of them list it, list what is hazardous and what is light and then agree on the edge, um, come to a middle ground on what the minimum edge is so that we are all talking about the same thing. Um, that is the legal part of it. Or well, the other legal part is um, that Uganda has a Tobacco Marketing and Control Act 
um, which came into effect, I think, in 1964, 67, 67 um, and it has a lot of it has a lot to say about the marketing chain and who can produce and who can produce and how places that tobacco. produce tobacco should register. So, Charlie, but does it contravene that 64, uh, that 67 Act? No, it doesn't. Um, it's only the only fault of this Act. Um, the Act is good market-wise. Its only fault is that it's silent on child labor. Yeah. So, so it needs it's quite yeah, it's, it's, it hasn't it's, been updated in so long. It is silent on new, uh, new people. Yeah, yeah. It's very market-oriented, which um, which is something I wouldn't care about so much. The problem is it does not um, talk about labor standards on tobacco farms or who can be on farms and who cannot be. Uh, so we have we are we are also asking for that to be updated to include a clause on labor standards um, gear uh, for adults and then no children at all and then also to protect to protect them to acknowledge that the children are there they should be protected but best of all they should be removed from farms. Isaac, what are the reasons the parents give uh, to keep for keeping children uh, away from school and at work? Yeah, thank you. Um, actually, one of the reasons they give to me when I see them is um, maybe sometimes they are ignorant about really what child labor is and the impact of child labor on children because one of the issues they talk about poverty, they talk about trying to teach children how to learn to work, uh, then uh, if a form of socialization, you know, it's through work that you socialize. Those are some of the uh, inform that is some of the information that we got when we are asking, you know, why do children work. But uh, to us, we, th we see, and actually from, from there we didn't sit down and say, well, let us leave this. We started conducting sensitization at the, uh, there and then, training, community uh, resources that would help us also, you know, create awareness massively. Yeah, so we just realize that sometimes this is a, a false perspective of the pa of the parents they think they are through engaging your children to work and not going to school right. you know you are, uh, because now you find actually the issue is you find a parent has grown up because his grandfather was a, a, a tobacco farmer uh, that man didn't go to school he's also started helping with the, the dad so when he has children like I've survived up to now that is what we I've raised yeah, you. yeah that's what we will get <laughs> Now, this is where I am. This tobacco is, has made me survive, you know. Now, why, why the heck do you, should you go you to school? You don't need to go to Come school. Come and join. Grow tobacco. Yeah, so you see... And what do the tobacco companies say? Uh, tobacco companies, uh, actually, to, to tell you this, this research, we conducted it with the support of tobacco companies. Oh, really? Yeah, there is, uh, there is uh, a, a, an, an organization called Elimination of Child Labor in Tobacco Growing, Geneva Foundation, which is located in Geneva. It's, uh, it, it has many, it, it has uh, different tobacco companies come together and say, you know, as tobacco companies, our social With good companies, intentions. Yeah. Although we want to have people grow tobacco, there are things we should, they should not be sure that children are not right. engaged in this kind of work. Okay. So that's how we came to work with dangers. us. Yeah, because, yeah, because they try to do some boundaries, some yeah, lines. Exactly. I don't know. Do, 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 how about the issue of human trafficking? Do some parents, you know, uh, bring children, conscript them so they can traffic them, sell them abroad or something like that? Uh, Is there a corridor there for that? Uh, trafficking and uh, labor. Uh, thankfully, I got involved in a uh, resettlement of about three children one from Ghana in 2010, another one from Kenya who was uh, trafficked from uh, Bugisu into Kenya. Now what happens normally, I remember in 2010, around October, uh, Ampkan had to withdraw, rescue some children from Masaka where they had been, they were taken from Katakui uh, and brought to Masaka to work on uh, plantations. They are rescued and taken back. Now there is a very big uh, relation between trafficking and labor. Uh, of course legally now the beauty about it is that we have a law which uh, addresses uh, trafficking of children which right. is the 2009 Prevention of uh, Trafficking okay. in Persons Act. Yeah. What normally happens is children are got from the vulnerable regions where poverty is extremely high. We are talking about areas in Karamoja 
Many of those children you see uh, taken from Karamoja are taken sometimes in the western part of the country. I already told you that a number was rescued from Masaka uh, in Kalungu areas. Uh, they were carrying out uh, farming on the plantations. They were got from Masaka. But what is happening is that many of the owners of these farms uh, normally want to take advantage of the cheap labor. Yes. And the best way to take advantage of the cheap labor is to go where uh, the problem is highest. Uh, I've told you Karamoja right now yes. is the biggest source of uh, trafficking, not only for children who are brought onto the streets of Kampala but even or taken of out farms. of the country, but children also got from there and intentionally taken uh, to participate in agriculture, in production of these cash crops, especially tobacco. Are there other crops? Uh, tobacco is one. Uh, you have sugar. sugar. Do you have sugar cane? Does yes. it happen? Sugar cane. Well, which does plantations happen. We not have many. Uh, and then tea. Which plantations do child, uh, child labor to go? I, I, I can. The child who has got from Masindi. Yes. Masindi is one area. But also, the child who has got by Ampkan in 2009. Was from which? From Nairobi. Yes. Uh, from Kenya. Okay. Had been taken to a tea plantation. This child was only 11 years and was taken from uh, Bugisu Sironko and taken to Kenya to work uh, on a tea plantation. So it is really happening. Uh, the challenge that there is is that the law which was put in place to address trafficking is still weak. It's very weak. Uh, it's not weak in terms of the penalty it gives. It's very severe actually because it provides for 21 years imprisonment for child trafficking, for trafficking, for aggravated trafficking, and especially if the victim uh, dies or gets HIV, wow. the penalty is death. So it's not weak, wow. but the problem is implementation, implementation on the ground right. is yeah. still lacking. Okay. Uh, well, and actually, when you talk of trafficking, some other people, most people think it's taking people from Uganda to other countries. By then, we also could be in trafficking from Karamoja yeah, to Masaka. No, from from Masaka here to to Chisenyi, because some people go to Masaka. Uh, you you are a businessman. You pick four kids, bring them, give them, them, to, give them to different uh, Homes. people who yeah. want domestic workers. But and every month they are paying you thirty thousand. They are giving those people twenty thousand illegal transportation. That is people, trafficking. You know, and and so that the problem that we still have is that very many. That's people not an employment agency. It's it's it's, it's exploitation. Yeah, that, what is the exploitation there? Because they are underage. The exploitation is we, trafficking is illegal movement of people. You know. Well, I'm taking them to get jobs. Yeah, you are taking. Like you live here to go to the US. Yes, but no. Or to work at the UN. Yeah, of course that is uh, illegal movement. Illegal movement of people is now. So when you have taken me to US, what kind of job have you given me? I'm a person. I, 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 I,
0302-5390390. Can you call in? Please tell us your name and where you are calling from, Sharon. Um, and then uh, I just also just wanted to say that um, trafficking, especially local trafficking uh, within Uganda, is just one of the other things that are causing child labor. I think we blame poverty a lot, and sometimes it comes off as a justification, but there are such things as mere neglect of children, where parents decide to not take responsibility. And um, in Masindi and Kiriandonga, I think we found that mostly the male parents simply abandon their families and refuse to contribute to the household income, or married someone else and started another family, which which makes their children extra vulnerable. Maybe if he had stayed and an income and looked after them and contributed food, the government would have brought a free education. But um, abandoning their children brings, um, it, it's causing those problems and there is orphanhood, um, especially when you look at HIV and AIDS. Yeah. Yes, uh, so it's a big thing. Yeah. Let's talk about Rakai. How do you draw the lines? Because Rakai, we've seen child headed families, we've seen grandmother, grandfather headed families. Yeah. How do you deal with that situation? Uh, the children have to work to fend for themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, 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 that's what, what we're trying to do is we know that children do not live alone. You know, at one stage or another, there are relatives who are Kuroza, there are communities. Because when you look at the child labor policy, actually, it gives the responsibility of eliminating child labor. Every person is a stakeholder. The community is a stakeholder. One of the things we are trying to do now after educating the community leaders and the district leaders, we are trying to say that they, the community now be responsible. And we are moving ahead creating this kind of awareness that they, the communities be uh, are responsible for the people, the children that they live with and care for them also. Relatives also should not always come on board and help these kids. So this is for, for the kids that we come across who are easily not uh, who are fending for themselves if we could we try to trace some of the people their close relatives and we try to uh, uh, sensitize them on the why it would be important for them to help these kinds of children and uh, why did you specifically Arun, how, why did you specifically center in, zero in on Masindi and Kiriandongo are they the worst case scenario uh, actually Masindi, Masindi and Kiriandongo uh, tobacco growing has been very prevalent in Masindi, Kiriandongo. Or maybe it's because it's close to the capital. There's a lot of West Nile. They go out of tobacco. I was going to go to it then in West Nile and Hoyum actually. But this study has started, had started in uh, dealing with Masindi and Kiriandongo started way back in 2004 and we really wanted to and we wanted to, to deal with it seriously. And by that time the prevalence of child labor in Masindi and Kiriandongo was worse than it is today. So basically yes. that's why we chose Work in that area. But I think also compared to other districts and areas that grow tobacco, mm. um, the Sedeco study did find in yeah. 2002 that mm. Masindi has the most, um, the highest level of child labor, mm -hmm. but it also go, it's the most unreported um, because uh, most of it is on household farms. But, but, but we know household farms. Yeah, Let's get that a little bit yeah. better. Mm. What do you do in your household farms? Um, so the difference between the household farms and then children working on other people's farms is because, um, as we've said, children's work on household farms is more easily looked at as socialization. When you're talking about child labor to any random person that you meet in Masindi, they will agree with you, um, they did agree with us that child labor is horrible, but when you say what's child labor, they say giving out your children to go and work on other people's farms or trafficking children to work on other people's farms or using children on your farm who are not yours and then paying them or paying them too little. But uh, when it comes to Using we signed a contract and a household has this many tons of tobacco leaves to produce. To them, that's not child labor. The child is just, you know, contributing <coughs> to daddy's like salary. washing the dishes at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So th there is that huge difference. It makes it hard for the community to react um, on a higher level and say, we have a huge problem with child labor because 90% of the children are working on family farms. I mean, talking to government, do you get the feeling that they're sensitive to these things? Or for them, I, it's I, business I, as usual? I, this, this is the problem we have had. Uh, if you look at a report uh, by the African Forum, I think, Child Forum, 2009, uh, it ranked Uganda as one of the countries with the best laws in Africa in position 9. But when it came to implementation, the country went almost to 27. We normally have those good policies. Yes. The spirit is so, willing, yes. but the body normally is and, weak. And, and I think that is the challenge that we do have, and uh, especially with the state. Now, these beautiful laws are in place and regulations, but the question is implementation. Implementation is still lacking.
That's one thing. But what is resulting into this is that it is the failure to implement the laws is affecting other government programs. Because if we talk about UPE, which we celebrate today and say that we have 8 million children in school, have we taken time to establish how many of those 8 million children are dropping out to engage in child labor and how many more would have been in the program? if they were taken, if child labor was seriously addressed. Now we have concerns that are normally brought as individuals that there is a lot of poverty. I want to give you an example, live example across the world. There is a region in India called Kerala. Yes. That region is the poorest in India. Yes. But because of the commitments by the political leadership and administrators in that region, that area today is one of the few uh, villages in the world that is child labor free. There were concentrated efforts, especially those that aimed at, first of all, helping people understand uh, the alternatives to child labor, one, the dangers involved with child labor, but helping people to understand uh, what legal issues can normally come with child labor. I know in our case in Uganda, very many of the people who are em employing children are either ignorant of the law or others are stubborn. So I would think the state and other partners should, crack the should engage seriously and massively in sensitizing the public, especially on the dangers involved with child labor, the dangers that are involved if a child does not go to school, the dangers that are involved if a child is employed and is uh, affected health-wise, but also we have a very big uh, cancer within our community, the growing spirit of individualism. Go on. I always tell people that in Africa there is a saying that as a child is born, by two people, that is a man and a woman. Yes. It can't be three, it's always two people, a man and a woman. But after the child is born, they belong the role of looking after that child belongs to the entire community. But what is happening today, the opposite, you find, you move out of your uh, gate today, driving, or on a motorcycle, you find children who are carrying out some work, especially collecting scrap in areas, in urban areas, and the man driving his car will simply pass, pass those children. Now, those are the issues that we need to iron out. Even before we can think of calling the state to come and help, what role have you played as an individual, as member a of a community, member, as the LC, as the policeman, as any member of the community to ensure that our country is free of child labor. It starts there. As long as we iron out that casa of individualism, we shall have the answer to addressing the problem of child labor. As and as it's a function of development. Added, added to addressing the issue of uh, poverty, which is coming out very strongly. Uh, I told you earlier at the start of the show that the children who go, who are involved in child labor, do not come from Bugolobi, where the Harunas and several the other come places, from. Yes. But the children who are involved in child Chisenye. labor are the children of the man and woman who is struggling to earn a living. So the children are struggling to earn a living, go out to work, buy themselves clothes, buy food, buy books, pay for themselves school fees. As long as we do not uh, critically look at that group and bring them into our several development programs, we have the NADS program, which is in place. All that is lacking is to check the corruption that is involved to ensure that NADS targets the rightful people that it is supposed to target the from poor, a not the perspective. rich. Yeah, not a rich man. Haruna, who already has a motorcycle, is the very one who will benefit from a development program. Right. We have to iron out such issues if we are indeed to focus our efforts on eliminating poverty, which is one of the, uh, the causes. Yeah. So you're saying uh, corruption is a bad thing? Corruption is bad. Well, I'm, learn I'm learning tonight. Corruption is bad. <laughs> it's bad. It's, it's the one that is yielding all the things that we are facing now. All right. Well, to end here, thank you very much indeed, uh, our dear guests. Listeners, I must apologize if you are not able to get through on the lines. The lines will be working tomorrow. They'll be worked on. Thank you very much indeed, our dear guests. Mr. Haruna Mawa, uh, child rights activist, thank you very much for coming. Spectrum tonight. Ms. Sharon Muhwezi, program associate in charge of social protection at the Platform for Labor Action. That's uh, an NGO. Thank you very much for coming tonight. And Mr. Isaac, Mr. Isaac Arinaitre, the Networking and Community Development Officer at the Platform for Labor.
action. Thank you very much for tuning in. I've been your host, Edmond. She's a spectrum. We'll be back tomorrow. Up next is the news.